Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we'll be talking about psychrometrics. What is our motivation for this topic? It will help us think about one of the key aspects of a building. That is, keeping us comfortable. The prefix on this word is psychro, which means cold or to make cold. Psychometrics, or sometimes referred to as psychrometry, is the study of moist air. We are going to see how the thermal properties of air is important and relate it to heating and cooling of air and how this impacts our comfort. The air around us has water vapor in it. The water and the gases that make up air, mainly nitrogen and oxygen, all coexist in this gas mixture. We will see how the relationship of the water vapor in the air will help us understand how we can make spaces more comfortable. In module one, we introduced the major environmental impacts resulting from the energy used by buildings. And we discussed how one of the solutions to this problem comes down to reducing the amount of energy used by buildings. In theory, you could just remove all energy uses from a building to meet this goal, like lighting, heating, cooling, and ventilation. But can you guess what the problem would be with this solution? No one would want to live in that building. Do you think that the building on the right, which is probably a zero energy building, would meet your criteria for comfort? It depends heavily on outdoor conditions. Chances are that the house temperature will be close to the outdoor conditions. You see, it's true that buildings are fundamentally about providing shelter and security a safe place to get out of the elements, but we also want buildings to be comfortable for occupants and provide a healthy environment for them to live and work. Building designers, architects and engineers alike, would agree that designing for your occupants comfort and health is the primary goal. Energy efficiency and sustainable design should come second, but as we'll see throughout this course, when you prioritize occupants in your design, you will naturally achieve much of the performance needed to reach zero energy. Let's think about occupant comfort for a minute. What defines a comfortable environment? Think about that from your own perspective. What makes you comfortable? We can probably all agree on a few things. Are you thinking about a specific temperature? Are you thinking about what you're wearing or what you're doing? Sometimes we think about humidity. If it's too humid outside and it's hot, you are uncomfortable. Wind or air movement also impacts our comfort level. Or think of it this way, what makes you uncomfortable? That's probably easier to think about. If you're too cold, what do you do? You might put on another layer of clothing or you might change into something warmer. You might also increase your activity level. Unconsciously, your body does this on its own by shivering when you're cold, but walking, running, or exercising can elevate your metabolic rate and make you feel warmer. And looking at air movement, you might turn off a fan or get out of the wind if you're feeling too cold. What about if you're too warm? You might remove a layer of clothing or wear something lighter. You might try and decrease your activity level and relax. If you're feeling too warm and the humidity level is high, dehumidifying the air can help you feel more comfortable. We'll talk about this later. And lastly, you might turn on a fan to increase the air movement around your body. All of this points to the fact that our bodies have a pretty specific and narrow comfort zone. This results from the fact that the human body generates heat. There is energy content in the food we eat. One byproduct of the cellular activity is heat. When we have more activity, we generate more heat. While we will talk more about heat and temperature in module three, if we don't remove heat from our bodies, we will overheat. Heat flows from hot objects to cold objects. The larger the difference in temperature, more heat flows. In the application of thermal comfort, our bodies are typically the higher temperature object at around 98 degrees Fahrenheit and heat dissipates to our cooling surroundings. It just so happens that around 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit is widely agreed upon as a comfortable room temperature because this is the temperature difference 
that is needed to remove heat from our bodies, but not so much of a difference that too much heat is removed and we feel cold. As we approach extreme cold temperatures, our bodies risk developing hypothermia. Of course, this is a dangerous situation and is well beyond the discussion of comfort. There are also situations where our bodies are at a lower temperature than the surrounding environment. Think of a scorching hot 105 degree day, for example. Remember that heat generally flows from higher temperature to lower temperature. So to cool off in this environment, our bodies need help which primarily comes in the form of perspiration or sweat. As the sweat evaporates away from our skin, it takes heat with it, as it takes energy to evaporate water. But as we'll discuss in this episode, the humidity of the air greatly impacts how effectively we can cool off by evaporating sweat. So in extreme conditions, our bodies risk developing hyperthermia and overheating, even with our bodies attempt to cool off by sweating. How the body regulates temperature is very complex and dives deep into thermodynamics and heat transfer. The important part of comfort is humidity, temperature, and air movement are some of the environmental parameters that contribute to our comfort. Conditions that buildings need to maintain to keep us comfortable. There is an entire ASHRAE standard, standard 55, that uses the research in the field of human comfort and encapsulates the information. So now that we've thought through what makes us comfortable or uncomfortable in certain environmental conditions, let's move on and take a more technical look at the properties of air. This will help us understand two things. The idea of a comfort zone, usually a range of temperatures and humidity levels, and what processes need to occur in different climate zones to help bring indoor environmental conditions into that comfort zone. Air is a mixture of several different gases, mainly nitrogen and oxygen. But more importantly for this discussion is the presence of water vapor. Water vapor is water in a gaseous state, and it is almost always present in the air. The amount of water vapor varies from near 0% by volume in the driest climates to around 4% by volume in the most humid tropical climates. You may have heard the term relative humidity before. What we're talking about here is not relative humidity. These numbers are expressed by volume of water vapor in the air. We will discuss relative humidity later. So assume we have a cubic foot of really humid air. You can imagine how the outside air feels right before it rains. Up to 4% of that volume would be water vapor. Looking at it another way, a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot room, or 1,000 cubic feet, would contain 40 cubic feet of water vapor. Now, water vapor occupies a significant larger volume than liquid water. So let's put this in more relatable terms. If that 40 cubic feet of water vapor condensed out of the air, the liquid water would fill about three cups. Let's pause here for a moment. Why is this discussion of water vapor and air important? Well, first, the example we just went through is an expression of humidity ratio. An important term we'll come back to later. Second, I want you to think about your own experience again. Does the humidity of air affect how, you, how comfortable you feel? I'm sure it does. And as we saw in this example, it doesn't take much water to make a humid environment. Humidity is an expression of the amount of water vapor in the air. Just like with the temperature, there's a happy comfort zone for humidity. High humidity levels feel muggy and low humidity levels feel dry, both of which are uncomfortable. High humidity is uncomfortable because it inhibits our body's ability to cool off with evaporative cooling. And low humidity is uncomfortable because the skin gets too dry and our respiratory system needs moisture in the air we breathe in order to survive. This brings us to the topic of psychometrics, which is fundamentally the science of air-water mixture, just like we talked about and the study of the properties of air at different temperatures and humidity levels. By understanding psychometrics, we can define the comfort zone, 
and develop building design strategies for creating an indoor environment that stays within that comfort zone as much as possible. We'll continue exploring this topic in our next episode as we look at psychometric charts and explain how they are used in building design. As always, thanks for watching. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments about the topics we've covered here.